Real quick before I start the video, the giveaway I did last time was a load of fun to do. Congratulations to Michael for winning it, so I thought I'd do another one. So I'm giving away a SNES Mini, which is a mini console with a bunch of classic SNES games on it, including one of the greatest Zelda games of all time, A Link to the Past. I'll run this giveaway right up until the end of March, so you've got a while to do it. Check the link in the description for more details. So previously I ranked every Link from the Legend of Zelda series on their strength, deciding which Link I thought was the most powerful in the series, taking into account their physical attributes, item arsenal, skills and experience. If you haven't checked that video out there's a card in the top right or a link in the description. But now it's time we move on from courage to the dark side of the force. Well, the Tri-Force. Power. So drop a like if you want to see more of this content, or subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. In the ancient desert far west of Hyrule live the Gerudo tribe. The Gerudo carry a gene not found in any other people of Hyrule. The entire population is female, save for one male born every century. This male becomes their king, leading the tribe of warrior women. Shortly before Ocarina of Time, a young male Gerudo was born and raised by the twin witches Kotake and Koume, a child with a signature flaming red hair and amber eyes, a child named Ganondorf. As was tradition, Ganondorf grew to become the leader of the tribe, ruling his people in the harsh winds and burning sun of the Gerudo desert. But with envious eyes, the king looked to the green fields of Hyrule, the ripe gardens, sapphire blue waters, fertile soils. It was this envy that caused him to first attempt to take the Triforce during Ocarina of Time, which he did, yet due to his imbalanced heart, it split into three pieces, leaving him with only the Triforce of Power. This piece still granted him unimaginable power, though he hungered for more. Over seven years while the Hero of Time was sealed away, he bent the land of Hyrule to his will, and searched for those who held the remaining two pieces, which he found in Princess Zelda and Link. During the final showdown versus the Hero of Time, after he's defeated in single combat, the Gerudo Thief brought the full might of the Triforce of Power to bear, transforming him into a beast of pure, burning hatred, Ganon. This was the birth of the King of Darkness, Hyrule's Blight. Every other appearance of Ganon in the series can be traced back to this one Gerudo, the King of Thieves from the Desert. Across all of the Zelda games, in all appearances, it's the exact same guy, whether it's a brooding lost king or a behemoth boar demon. All Ganons are actually just the same Ganondorf, just at different times or in different timelines. The only exception to this is Four Swords Adventures, which takes place after Twilight Princess, in which Ganondorf was truly slain for good with the Master Sword. A reincarnation of the Gerudo appeared later, who became the King of Darkness that the Hero of Light takes on. So because they're all the same incarnation of Ganon, except for Four Swords Adventures, and perhaps Calamity Ganon, who we don't really know much about, I can't rank the different incarnations differently like I did with the Lynx. So for this list, I'll just treat each game's Ganon as a different entry on the ranking, even though most of the time they'll all be the same entity. In chronological order, we have Ganondorf and his Ganon form from Ocarina of Time. 
In the Downfall timeline, Ganon from A Link to the Past, Ganon from the Oracle games, Ganon and later Yu Ganon from A Link Between Worlds, and Ganon from Zelda 1. The Demon King appears in both Link's Awakening and Zelda 2, though only as a form the Nightmare takes on in the former and as a game over screen in the latter, so I won't include them. In the Child timeline we've got Ganondorf and his Ganon form from Twilight Princess, and the new, reincarnated Ganon from Four Swords Adventures. Then in the Adult timeline, the Wind Waker's Ganondorf. And finally, at the end of all timelines, Calamity Ganon from Breath of the Wild. So instead of 12 links, we've only got 9 different appearances of Ganon to rank. Like the links though, I'll break down what makes each Ganon powerful into 4 separate categories. Slightly different to the heroes though, as Ganon's, well, not Link. The four categories I'll use to rank the Ganons are Physical Attributes. Like with the Links, I'll rank each Ganon on how physically powerful they are. Ganondorf is famous for it. His raw physical strength is just as key to his character as his burning passion for domination and the Triforce. Physical attributes mean strength, endurance, size, anything that would give him a physical advantage over other Ganons. Alright, different to the Lynx now, while Link is pretty much a one-man army, a lot of what makes Ganon so scary is the amount of monsters he has under his control, and the amount to which he dominates the world. So I'll rank each Ganon on the strength of their armies, generals, as well as their general effect on the world. Calamity Ganon, for example, took control of all the Sheikah machines designed to oppose him, meaning he has dominion over far more than, say, Ganon in the Oracle games who's revived and killed right away at the very end of the game. Magic. Despite what Smash Bros would have you believe, Ganondorf is a sorcerer. He's possibly the most potent magic wielder in the Zelda series, so I'll rank the Ganons on their wizardry. Intelligence. And finally, the brains behind the brawn, Ganondorf would get nowhere if he wasn't intelligent. We've seen through the series that Ganondorf is actually incredibly cunning and manipulative, such as swearing fealty to the King of Hyrule during Ocarina of Time, all the while laying his plans for domination behind the scenes, and tricking the Hero of Time into opening the Sacred Realm for him. Ganon is incredibly intelligent, so I'll rank the Ganons on their cunning. So that's it, the categories on which we'll rank Zelda's big bad, the King of Darkness, Ganondorf. Let's get into it. Ganon, Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons. So first off, we've got the weakest Ganon in the series, Ganon from the linked Oracle games. While the main antagonists of Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons appear to be Varan and Onox, they're revealed to be simply demons summoned from the Dark Realm by Twin Rover, Gerudo witches loyal to Ganon, who want to sacrifice Princess Zelda to revive him after his defeat at the hands of Link during A Link to the Past. However, due to Link, they can't sacrifice Zelda, and instead choose to sacrifice themselves to revive the Demon King. This results in a horrifically botched resurrection. While Ganon returns to life, there's nothing left of his brilliant, devious mind. He's a mindless, feral beast, bent on causing as much destruction as possible. Physically, this Ganon is relatively powerful. He's in his boar form, which physically is more powerful than his original Gerudo body, which we can see from games in which we face both, like Ocarina of Time and Twilight Princess. In this boar form, he's gigantic and incredibly muscular, and during his battle, he's surprisingly quick. However, he doesn't possess the might of the Triforce of Power, hindering his physical strength. Ganon in the Oracle games is revived right at the very end of the Linked games by Twin Rover, and then subsequently killed by the Hero of Legend. He doesn't have time to assert his dominion over the world, he has no army, no control. This Ganon is simply a raging monster revived by those loyal to him. Next up, Magic. I've mentioned before that Ganon is a powerful warlock, and while this Ganon lacks the brilliant mind of the others, he still possesses magical powers. He's able to teleport, as well as levitate his trident, can throw balls of energy and ignite the arena into a vortex of magic which reverses Link's controls. This Ganon is still incredibly potent with magic, though due to him being a mindless beast, we never see him use it to its full extent. And finally, Intelligence. You've probably noticed that this Ganon isn't the sharpest tool in the shed. He's only really capable of very limited speech, such as I am the Demon King Ganon and destroy all, kill all, making him the least intelligent Ganon appearance. He's just an incredibly angry magic pig. 
Ganon Four Swords Adventures. So here we've got the one Ganon we know for sure is different to the original, Ganon from Four Swords Adventures. This Ganon started as a reincarnation of Ganondorf, born to the Gerudo tribe, who broke a taboo and entered the Desert Pyramid, finding the Trident and the Dark Mirror. He becomes Beast Ganon, and uses the Dark Mirror to create Shadow Links, tricking Link into pulling the Four Sword and releasing Vati. Physically, this Ganon is colossal in size. We fight him in his beast form, where he's easily 50 feet tall, muscular, and surprisingly quick. He lacks the Triforce of Power, however, which makes him weaker than many other Ganon appearances, but his colossal size and beast form give him a solid physical ranking. This Ganon, as well as being physically powerful, has a tight grip on the Kingdom of Hyrule. With Shadow Link, he seals the Six Maidens and Zelda, and releases Vati to wreak havoc. With his darkness, he plunges part of Hyrule into the Dark World, and stops the flow of time and causes another part to freeze. He also uses Vati as a pawn, who's a powerful villain in his own right, but Ganon simply used him for his own gain. He's shown to be a powerful sorcerer too, such as stopping time in Hyrule, and the ability to use multiple spells in combat, teleport, and become invisible. It's obvious that this Ganon is intelligent, I'd argue slightly less than some others as his schemes are far more simple, but he still tricked Link and used Vati to his own advantage, showing he's clearly cunning and dangerously intelligent. Ganon, The Legend of Zelda The very first in the series, the Ganon from The Legend of Zelda on the NES. The backstory of Zelda NES is… sparse at best. We know that before the game, Ganon obtained the Triforce of Power, and attempted to take the Triforce of Wisdom too. Zelda however split it into eight parts and scattered it across Hyrule, parts which Link collects during the game. Physically, this Ganon is very powerful. You're gonna sense a theme here, but this Ganon has the Triforce of Power, which grants him superhuman strength and durability, as well as appearing in his powerful boar form. The Master Sword doesn't appear in this game, but like other Ganons he can be killed with the Silver Arrows. We don't see many feats of strength because, well, this game's on the NES, but it's safe to assume that this is one of the more physically powerful Ganons due to his possession of the Triforce of Power and his appearance as a boar. He also has dominion over pretty much the entirety of Lesser Hyrule. When Link journeys across it during the game, the kingdom is an apocalyptic wasteland, littered with Ganon's minions. The only Hylians left hide in caves, Ganon has laid Hyrule low. Prior to the events of the game, Ganon led an army and attacked the kingdom, which results in the ruin seen during the game. Zelda 1 is pretty much a post-apocalyptic game. When it comes to magic ability, we don't see too much from this Ganon. We can assume he's a decent magic wielder because he can use energy balls along with teleportation and invisibility during his battle, but that's about it. And finally, intelligence. This Ganon appears towards the end of the Downfall timeline, which means it's after both of the Oracle games, but he doesn't appear as mindless this time. He can lead an army, shows cognitive thoughts like sending his minions after Impa in the backstory, and imprisoning Princess Zelda, but he shows nothing close to the brilliance of some of the other Ganons. Ganondorf the Wind Waker Next up, my personal favourite incarnation of the Gerudo King, Ganondorf from the Wind Waker. This Ganondorf is of course the same one as the one from Ocarina of Time, although it takes place in a timeline following his defeat at the hands of the Hero of Time. He's the same Ganondorf who was defeated in single combat, brought down his tower, and used the Triforce of Power to become the Demon King Ganon, before being sealed by the Sages. Ages after this defeat, he returned, and with no hero to oppose him, laid waste to Hyrule. The gods intervened, however, flooding Hyrule and drowning the flames of Ganondorf's rampage beneath a new ocean. During the Wind Waker, however, the King of Evil makes his return, searching the sea for girls with pointed ears, hunting for the reincarnation of Princess Zelda. Physically, this Ganondorf is very powerful. He wields the might of the Triforce of Power. This artifact grants him unimaginable strength and durability. How much strength exactly is unknown, though I would argue that it's at least more than the Ganon found in the Oracle games. Although he's not in his powerful boar form, the Triforce of Power allows the Wind Waker's Ganondorf to survive a flood, survive being burned alive by Valu at the Forsaken Fortress, and fight off the Hero of Winds with absolute ease. 
Ganondorf is also very physically agile. We can see him flip around the battle arena, fighting Link with two swords. In order to damage him, he must be paralysed with the Light Arrows, which are the most powerful arrows in the series, along with the Silver Arrows from A Link to the Past and Ancient Arrows from Breath of the Wild, arrows which one-hit kill any non-boss enemy, which then allows him to be hit with the Master Sword. And somehow, even when the Master Sword has been rammed firmly into his skull, he lives long enough to utter his last words before turning to stone. This guy was tough. In terms of his dominion, the Wind Waker's Ganondorf is powerful, but not so much as others. At the beginning of the game, he works solely from the Forsaken Fortress, his base of operations. He has control over legions of basic enemies like Darknuts and Moblins, though most of his power is sealed at the beginning of the game. He creates Puppet Ganon, Phantom Ganon, Jalhalla and Mulgara, the latter two of whom kill the Sages, granting power to the Master Sword. At the end of the game, he has access to all three pieces of the Triforce, though his wish is stolen from him by King Daphnis. Wind Waker's Ganondorf is absolutely a threat, but not to the same extent that some other Ganons are. With magic, Wind Waker's Ganondorf is incredibly powerful. In addition to basic magical abilities like the power of flight or the power to conjure swords, he's been shown to utterly destroy an entire island while searching for Jaboon, place a curse on the whole ocean preventing the sun from rising and causing an eternal storm, create a phantom of himself to challenge Link, create a puppet Ganon which he can control, and see the dreams of Princess Zelda. Ganondorf's power was so incredible in fact that they were sealed by the goddesses with the magic of the Master Sword and when Link pulls it during the game, the seal is broken and his full power is unleashed. And finally, Intelligence. This is the same Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time, who was a cunning, manipulative thief, but centuries after a crushing defeat and failed retaliation. He manages to lure Link into pulling the Master Sword in order to release the seal on his powers, though unbeknownst to the hero, he had slain the two sages, making it nearly powerless. He's still the intelligent Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time, maybe even more so due to being centuries older. Calamity Ganon, Breath of the Wild. Next up, the Scourge of Hyrule, the terrifying, inhuman Calamity Ganon. This Ganon is largely unexplained. We don't know if he's a reincarnation of Ganondorf or an older version of the classic Ocarina Ganon. Either way, he's terrifying. Calamity Ganon appeared 10,000 years before Breath of the Wild, but was met with extreme resistance. Link wielding the Master Sword, Zelda and her sacred power, and an army of machines built by the Sheikah to oppose him. A legion of guardians, powerful spider-like tanks, and divine beasts, gigantic mobile fortresses. He was sealed and laid dormant for ages. However, a hundred years before Breath of the Wild, a fortune teller predicted his return. The Guardians and Divine Beasts were excavated, and the Princess of the Era attempted to awaken her hidden powers. But when the Beast awakened, no one was ready. Calamity Ganon appeared from beneath Hyrule Castle, and corrupted the Sheikah machines designed to stop him. He took control of the army of mechanical terrors, and used them to scour the land, burning cities, massacring civilians. With the Guardians, he fatally injured Link, who was taken to the Shrine of Resurrection to heal for a century. He was stopped from fully destroying everything by Zelda, whose powers have awakened, and kept him sealed in Hyrule Castle while she waited for the hero to heal. And for a hundred years, Hyrule lay in ruins. Ganon's minions let loose on the world, while Zelda trapped him in Hyrule Castle. Physically, Calamity Ganon has two forms. First is a monstrous splice of guardian parts and malice, a spider-like robot demon that's pretty much the most terrifying Ganon we've ever seen. This isn't actually his complete form. He was in a cocoon when Link reaches Hyrule Castle, trying to regenerate a physical body. Still, he's incredibly large and powerful, with the might of both malice and machinery granting him incredible strength. He can fire lasers, has multiple arms with different attachments like great scissors, blades and spears, can walk on walls, can summon blocks of ice, tornadoes and turn invincible. When this form is beaten by Link, he gives up on trying to reincarnate and becomes Dark Beast Ganon, hatred and malice incarnate. 
This beast is made of pure malice, a towering boar demon larger than a castle which can fire hugely destructive purple lasers from its eyes. While it's incredibly large and incredibly powerful, it's glacially slow. So where do I rank Calamity Ganon physically? It's not easy. He doesn't have the Triforce of Power, putting him at a disadvantage, but his mechanical parts grant him at least the strength of a Guardian, and in his Dark Beast form he's the largest incarnation of Ganon by a huge margin. I'd rank him similarly to Wind Waker Ganondorf physically, although he's far larger and seemingly far stronger, the lack of the Triforce of Power hurts his physical attributes. It's an artifact that grants its bearer nearly unlimited physical strength and durability, so despite Calamity Ganon being this monstrous augmented terror, or an incarnation of pure malice, he's not as physically powerful as other Ganons. But looking at his dominion, it's scary. This Ganon basically won. At the peak of his power he had control of all four divine beasts, an entire legion of guardians, as well as countless weaker enemies. He killed all four champions with blight ganons, killed the king and the Hyrulean royal army, destroyed the entirety of Castletown and central Hyrule, and came near to eradicating the Hylian race. The handful of remaining Hylians live in fear, in small civilizations scattered across the corpse of the kingdom. No Ganon has come as close to victory as Calamity Ganon. He's a force of nature, less a villain with plots and desires, more akin to an earthquake. And his magical abilities too are incredible. During his resurgence, using fractions of his power, he was able to poison the mind of every single guardian, taking control of them individually and overriding their Sheikah programming. He created four powerful Blight Ganons who were strong enough to kill the champions and control the Divine Beasts. And although he's sealed by Zelda in Hyrule Castle, his power leaks out in the form of the Blood Moon, staining the skies a dark red and reviving every single one of his minions that had fallen. When his first form is defeated, he's able to create a colossal body purely from his hatred, a titan built from fury and rage. This form can't even be killed with the Master Sword or the Light Arrows, instead eradicated by Zelda who's wielding the full power of the Triforce. And finally, Intelligence. While he might appear mindless, Calamity Ganon shows a scary amount of cunning. The obvious is his plan to take control of the Guardians, a move which single-handedly turned the tide of the war, allowing him to easily take control of Hyrule. Even when controlling the Guardians however, his thought process is clear and intelligent. He sent hundreds of Guardians in pursuit of the hero for example, as well as attacking places of religious nature or strategic advantage in force. However, this amount of cunning, while impressive, isn't close to the Wind Waker or Ocarina of Time. He's not mindless, but he's not the mastermind that other Ganons are. Ganondorf, Ocarina of Time. Let's go back to the beginning, to the first Gerudo King where it all started. Ganondorf in Ocarina of Time is known as the Gerudo Thief, and Thief is absolutely the term I'd use for him. He swore allegiance to the King of Hyrule while working behind his back to overthrow him. He manipulated the Hero of Time into opening the doors to the Sacred Realm where he tried to steal the Triforce but was left with only the Triforce of Power due to an imbalance in his heart. Still, with this single piece, he laid waste to Hyrule for seven years before the Hero of Time reawakened and defeated him. Physically, we've got two different forms to deal with. First, the Gerudo King, a colossal man well over seven feet tall, clad in thick black armour. Like with some other Ganons, this one wields the Triforce of Power. Physically, we can see him perform feats of strength such as being able to punch the floor with enough force to destroy it, as well as survive being hit with Light Arrows, the Master Sword, and having his gigantic tower collapse on top of him. He uses the Triforce of Power to transform into Beast Ganon, who in this game is taller and thinner than usual, wielding twin golden swords. He can smash apart stone with ease and won't die until Link rams the Master Sword into his skull. Access to this form alone makes him more powerful than the Wind Waker's Ganon, because although they both have the Triforce of Power, Ocarina Ganondorf's beast form turns him into a godlike behemoth. And for Dominion, during Ocarina of Time when Link was sealed in the Temple of Time, 
Ganondorf takes complete control of Hyrule, turning Castletown into a ruin inhabited by Redeads, destroying Hyrule Castle and fashioning his own in its place. He has a powerful army behind him with Twin Rover, his surrogate mothers, Bongo Bongo, a phantom, Morpha, a demon who has complete control over water. He killed the King of Hyrule and most of the Royal Guards, causing Zelda and Impa to go into hiding, and his power began seeping out from the temples across Hyrule. Even places like the sacred Kakiri Forest felt his darkness. He froze Zora's domain, almost starved an entire race by blocking Dodongo's cavern, and drained Lake Hylia. After seven years, Hyrule is in pain, a wounded kingdom ruled by a malicious tyrant. As a sorcerer, Ganondorf from Ocarina of Time is incredibly powerful. Before he even obtains the Triforce of Power, he's able to kill the Great Deku Tree. He's able to trap Princess Zelda, a powerful sorcerer herself, and teleport her from the Temple of Time to his castle without even being anywhere nearby. He created a powerful phantom, and when it disappointed him, banished it to a gap between dimensions. He levitates his castle over a lake of lava, can throw energy balls, levitate, and use the power of darkness to his advantage, and even when he's on the brink of death, is able to collapse his castle. This Ganon's a particularly powerful and dangerous magic wielder. And for intelligence too, this Ganondorf ranks highly. He manipulated the King of Hyrule, while laying his own plans for domination in secret. Not only this, but for the entirety of the first section of Ocarina of Time, you're just playing his game, collecting the three spiritual stones in the Ocarina of Time, the keys to the Sacred Realm, allowing him to enter and claim the Triforce for himself. Even during the latter half of the game, you don't really do much to phase his plans. Despite awakening the sages and killing Twin Rover, it's only during the final battle that this Ganondorf begins to lose. He laid out his plans perfectly, and his only two downfalls were the Triforce splitting into three instead of becoming his, and losing to Link at the end of the game. Or in an alternate version of events that cause the downfall timeline, despite the meddling of the Hero of Time, Ganondorf's plans went entirely as intended. He allowed Link to play into his hands before killing him and obtaining the full Triforce. This Ganon is truly the King of Evil. Ganondorf, Twilight Princess. Okay, we're really getting into it now. Twilight Princess didn't mess around with its characters. Link is a beast who can out-wrestle a Goron. The bosses are all colossal behemoths, and Ganondorf himself is one of the strongest we've seen in the series. We see Ganon in two different forms in this game, much like in Ocarina of Time, both beast form and Gerudo form. In both forms, he wields the Triforce of Power, which was bestowed upon him as a divine prank when he was executed by the Sages. He was ran through with the Sacred Sword, but the Triforce of Power kept him alive. With its extreme might, Ganondorf is both incredibly strong and incredibly durable. We see him kill a Sage with a simple chokehold while impaled with a sword, break the fused shadow with a single hand, tear through thick steel shackles, defeat Midna and the power of the fused shadow in single combat, and smash through giant stone pillars with ease. In order to kill Ganondorf, Link has to defeat his beast form, attacking the weak spot left by the wound he suffered at his execution, then strike him with multiple light arrows and blows from the Master Sword while he's on horseback, and then defeat him in single combat and plunge the Master Sword deep into the glowing weak spot on his chest. Even then, when ran through with the Blade of Evil's Bane, Ganondorf dies on his feet. He gets up from the ground and stands before Link, before the Triforce of Power finally leaves him and he succumbs to his fatal wound. This guy was an absolute monster. But not only is he physically a beast, Ganondorf in Twilight Princess has control over almost the entirety of the Light World and the Twilight Realm. Through Zant, he has dominion over the entire Twilight Realm, which at points spreads across most of Hyrule too. Zant forces Zelda and the Royal Army to stand down, allowing him to have control over Hyrule too. Twilight Princess is one of the most bleak Zelda games. At the peak of his power, Ganondorf came incredibly close to dominion over the entirety of Hyrule. Magic, as well, is this Ganon's forte. As a result of his control over the Twilight Realm, Ganondorf in Twilight Princess has full mastery of Twilight Magic, 
which he can use to teleport and even possess Princess Zelda, despite her powerful magical abilities and possession of the Triforce of Wisdom. It's not only Twilight magic though, this Ganondorf can summon phantom clones of himself during the horseback battle and defeat Midna and the Fused Shadow. When sent to the Twilight Realm by the Sages, he was so powerful that he was able to act as a god. He granted Zant a fraction of his powers, which allowed the Usurper King to overthrow Midna, cursing her into the form of an imp and sealing away much of her magical abilities and transform the rest of the Twilight into Shadow Beasts. Most actions Zant performs throughout the game are all simply due to Ganon's magic, such as raising Stalord from the ground and cursing Link into his wolf form permanently. Early on in the game, Zant seems unstoppable, and yet at the end, Midna with the Fused Shadow destroys him with no effort. But Ganondorf defeats Midna with apparent ease. Even with the Fused Shadow, the magical prowess of the Gerudo King and Twilight Princess is incredible. And finally, intelligence. It's pretty clear from his actions that this Ganondorf is very intelligent. Again, like with the Wind Waker's Ganondorf, this is the same person as the Ganon from Ocarina of Time. Although this time it's the version of Ganondorf that never seized the full Triforce, never oppressed Hyrule for seven years, never became the Demon King Ganon. Link went back in time before his treachery along with Zelda and warned the King of Hyrule about him. And years later, after a brutal war, Ganondorf was to be executed for his crimes. So this Ganon still has all the cunning and wit of his ocarina self, just without the humility and composure he has in the Wind Waker as a result of his defeat in that timeline. He easily manipulates any situation to his advantage. Even imprisonment in the Twilight Realm results in him taking control of the entire dimension through Zant, making his return to Hyrule even more dangerous. I'll rank him similarly to the Wind Waker's Ganondorf, it's the same manipulative, intelligent king, just in a different timeline and with a much more headstrong personality. Ganon, A Link Between Worlds Next up, Ganon from A Link Between Worlds. Ganon in this game plays less of a role than usual as he's really only a tool used by Yuga. Hilda and Yuga use the sages to resurrect Ganon after his defeat in the Oracle games. Likely due to the botched resurrection in that game, he's still a mindless raging beast in A Link Between Worlds. He's incapable of even proper speech, lacking the brilliant mind that made him so threatening in other games. But, after he's resurrected, Yuga merges with Ganon, creating one of the most terrifying and powerful villains ever seen in the series, Yu Ganon. Yu Ganon has the colossal size and muscle power of Ganon, the devious, intelligent mind of Yuga, and the powerful magical abilities of both. He wields the Triforce of Power and later on when he absorbs Hilda, the Triforce of Wisdom, making him a truly terrifying enemy. Not only is he the powerful pig Ganon, he wields the Triforce of Power, making him at least as strong as any Ganon seen before. However, his merge with Yuga adds additional physical strength and agility other Ganons don't possess. He wields a colossal golden trident which he can swing with ease. In order to defeat him, Link must use the Light Arrows, which in this game are apparently imbued with the sacred might of the Triforce itself, but even these only manage to stun the beast and he has to deal the final blow with the Master Sword. Yu Ganon, collaborating with Hilda, almost succeeded in stealing Hyrule's Triforce, allowing the kingdom to rot. With legions of soldiers created by Yuga, his power seeped into Hyrule, but his dominion isn't the same as other Ganons. His magical abilities are terrifying. In the final battle, he possesses both the abilities of Ganon and Yuga, as well as the power of the Triforce of Wisdom. He's able to levitate, teleport, become a painting, transform others into paintings, merge with other beings, as well as use a huge amount of different magical attacks. Yuga is able to create entire armies by painting them, and this ability likely isn't lost when he becomes Yuganon. I think this Ganon ranks as being easily one of the best sorcerers of any, largely due to the possession of the Triforce of Wisdom, which we know grants untold magical abilities to its holder. And finally, intelligence. This Ganon is easily one of the most intelligent, despite the fact that Ganon himself is mindless like in the Oracle games. His merge with Yuga gave him the intellect of the Low Rulian, and the possession of the Triforce of Wisdom grants him unrivaled, well, wisdom. 
He manages to trick Hilda, allowing her to think she has him under her command and control until the last minute. When all the pieces are in place, when he attacks her and then Link, aiming to obtain the full Triforce and grant himself the power of a god. Ganon, A Link to the Past So here we are, at the peak of darkness, the pinnacle of evil, the most powerful Ganon, A Link to the Past's King of Darkness. This Ganon defined what it meant to be the Demon King. Zelda 1 introduced him, Zelda 2 threatened his resurrection, but A Link to the Past truly showed who Ganon was, and showed off his might. A Link to the Past takes place after an alternate version of the events during Ocarina of Time. Instead of being defeated by the Hero of Time, Ganondorf managed to beat Link, taking his Triforce of Courage and Zelda's Triforce of Wisdom, and transforming into the monstrous boar demon, Ganon. It took the full power of all the sages to stop him, though they lacked the power to kill him, instead resorting to trapping him in the Sacred Realm, which had transformed into the Dark World. And for years, Ganon was sealed in this Dark World, with the full Triforce under his control, plotting his return. And return he did. Ganon used his powerful magic to disguise himself as Aghanim, a sort of phantom of his power, an evil sorcerer cloaked in red. Aghanim appears to be the primary antagonist of the game, capturing the Maidens, descendants of the Sages, but is actually just Ganon wanting to free himself from the Dark World, and use the might of the Triforce to impose his will on both worlds. Physically, this Ganon is monstrous. To give you a tiny glimpse of his physical power, when he takes the form of a bat after he's defeated his Aghanim, he's able to fly and smash through the thick stone of the Dark World Pyramid, which can only be broken by super bombs when it's already cracked. That's as a tiny bat. In his true form, the Big Blue Boar, his strength is colossal. Like many other Ganons, he's granted nearly unlimited physical strength with the Triforce of Power. He's so powerful, in fact, that not even the Master Sword can damage him without a spin attack. It has to be the Golden Sword, which is the Master Sword upgraded twice. And to kill him, Link needs to use the Silver Arrows, which are arrows so powerful that they one-hit any normal enemy in the game, including some bosses, yet it takes multiple of them to kill him. If Link's not wearing the Red Mail, Ganon deals the most damage of any enemy in the game with a whopping 8 hearts. And for Dominion, A Link to the Past's Ganon has Hyrule in a chokehold. Thanks to his manipulation of the kingdom as Aghanim, he seized control of the entirety of his military, killing the king and stealing Zelda and the Maidens. The Sacred Realm by this point is completely Ganon's domain, a twisted, horrific mirror of Hyrule, but his power throttles Hyrule too, he has the kingdom under his thumb. He's also an incredibly powerful sorcerer, like Yu Ganon, he wields the Triforce of Wisdom. He can use various magical attacks, such as energy balls and creating flaming bats, as well as the secret technique of darkness, which, to be fair, does appear to be quite similar to turning off the lights. He can change his physical appearance, both into a bat and agonim. He's able to teleport and create copies of himself. Years before A Link to the Past, from his imprisonment in the Dark World, Ganon was able to send forth horrific misfortunes to Hyrule, such as plague and drought, which even the best sorcerers in the realm couldn't stop. Using his magic, he can corrupt even a great fairy, which are powerful beings shown to be extremely resistant to dark magic. This Ganon is exceptionally intelligent too. Aside from having the Triforce of Wisdom, he cleverly manipulated the Kingdom of Hyrule, planning his return. In order to gain the trust of the royal family, he created an alter ego, Aghanim, and then sent forth plagues and drought from the Dark World. No one in Hyrule could stop these horrors, but Aghanim was able to, making him a trusted advisor to the king, named a hero and heir to the Seven Sages. But this was all a scheme, he used this new position to take control of the entire Hyrulean army, kill the king, and transport six of the seven sages to the Dark World, and finally Zelda too, breaking the seal on his entrapment. A Link to the Past's Ganon is intelligent, cunning, and manipulative. He's the result of an alternate version of events, where the mastermind King of the Gerudo actually defeated Link and carried out his plan to obtain the Triforce during Ocarina of Time. 
Despite being sealed in the Dark World, he devised a scheme to escape which granted him control of the entirety of Hyrule's military power. The brilliance of his plans, combined with his possession of the Trifles of Wisdom, easily makes him the most intelligent Ganon. In addition to this, this Ganon is in possession of the entire Triforce. That's the most powerful artifact in the entire Zelda series, and this Ganon has it. While he has the full Triforce, this Ganon has the power of a god. It's what Yuga Ganon wanted, the godlike power that rivals the strength of Hylia or the Golden Goddesses. While he has the Triforce, this Ganon is easily one of the most powerful beings ever in the Zelda series. So there's my ranking of the Ganondorfs and Ganons across the Zelda series. What do you guys think? Which do you think is the most powerful appearance we've seen of the King of Darkness? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, a like would be so appreciated, or subscribe if you haven't for more Zelda content. And again, there's a link in the description for the giveaway. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.